Hi, my name is John Capobianco, and, and I'm introducing you to a whole new idea, a whole new concept, my new project known as GATE, G-A-I-T, influenced heavily by Git. So we've gotten incredibly good at versioning and source control with Git, but AI conversations are still very ephemeral. If you've had a great conversation with AI, explored multiple ideas, tried different follow-ups or models, I think you understand the problem here. Once you close that terminal or exit that session, the reasoning of it path that you followed is basically gone. Gate, Git for Artificial Intelligence Transactions, is a version control, think of it as context control, for AI conversations. Every turn, question from the user, prompt from the user, answer from the model, becomes a content addressed object. Meaning every conversation becomes a commit. Every phase, every turn in your conversation is automatically committed. Now what this means is you can branch, merge, rewind. I didn't like the last answer. Let's go back to the previous step in the context and pick up from there, ignoring the bad answer and removing the poison from your context window. We can resume conversations in a gate tracked folder. And now with my remote server, you can even clone these and push to a remote repository and clone them to keep that conversation going anywhere. Or to allow your friends or colleagues or strangers on the internet to pick up your conversation and, and explore it further with their own prompts and their own models and their own ideas. So in this video, <clears throat> I'm going to show you Gate locally first, and then I'm going to push the conversation to a remote repo clone it somewhere else and resume the chat like it never stopped. This isn't prompt logging, all right? This is context control for thinking. Okay, so let's get a couple things going and I've got a little notepad file to help me keep track uh, to make this demo really worthwhile. So we're gonna start the terminal server for the remote server. Think of this as gatehub.com but right now it's just running on my local box. Okay, so that's the remote server side. Now let's get the client side set up. And this is gonna be really easy here. We're, this is just about going into uh, the right folder and setting up the right environment and everything. So now I'm in this folder here. And before I proceed, I don't wanna launch my browser. Um, we're gonna create a remote repository with a bearer token. Okay, so this will come in handy later, but for now we're just going to create a remote repository and you can see the owner is me and it's got the, right, so here we can see that we've posted that repo. Okay, now let's get back to the local mode. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize the repository. All right, now gate creates a dot gate directory, just like git creates a dot git directory. But instead of files and trees, this repository is designed to store AI turns, commits, and memory. Context, right? These objects are content addressed, and if the conversation is identical, meaning the hash is identical, this can be done across machines. Now this is not, this is infrastructure. This is not just a toy. So let's go ahead and gate init my folder. And now it's been initialized and we're going to do a gate status. And you can see that I have a head that's empty and I'm on the main branch in the root of my project, much like Git. Now we're going to take a look at the file structure here. Ah, oh, sorry, bad copy paste. We're going to take a look at the file structure here first. And you can see that we have turns, memory, heads, JSON L, and the gate head. Okay, now if I were to go into this folder, we could explore all of that, and we'll do that a little bit later, okay? Now we're gonna start a chat, and I'm gonna actually say gate, chat, no resume, since there's nothing to resume from. 
Gate by default assumes you're going to be resuming a command. I'll adjust this code later that if it's the first time or if there is no head, you don't need the no resume. But let's just go ahead and assume we need no resume. Now before I can even do that, I need to launch my local Olama. Now this will support things like Microsoft Local Foundry, Foundry Local, possibly LM Studio for local models. I will be adjusting the code in the future to support remote cloud-based AI, ChatGPT, Gemini, etc. Maybe via MCP. I'm still working that out. But for now, it is tracking local. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that chat no resume. And we can start asking questions. And you can see that no model was provided, so it's going to use the default of Llama 3. We have my repository, branch main, model, and the host for the local remote. And I can do slash commands in here as well. So let's go ahead and say, why is the sky blue? And if I hop over into Olama, we're going to see the tokens get churned and cranked out, and we're going to get an answer. Okay, from there... From there, we're going to go back into this folder or another terminal. Let's open another terminal here. And if I do gate status, no, it's not initialized because I'm not in the right folder. Hang on. So there's my answer. You can see my, my I have a 200 from Olama. And let me just change into this folder over in the other terminal. Uh. There we go. So now notice the head has changed and we're still in main and now we are in this it's been committed. This is now committed into the memory. Okay, so now let's do a couple more things, right? Start a chat, and also I want to show you some of the options around chat help. If I pop back into that other terminal, we have all of these options that we can resume, set the model, set the temperature, etc. So now I've started my chat. And let's take a look at the commits. So let me go back and add a second question to this. Actually, let's leave it at one question. Okay. So now if I do the gate log limit five and gate show, here is turn one, my question, my answer. Pretty awesome, right? Isn't that pretty awesome? Right. So every one of those turns is a commit. I didn't have to save anything. The conversation is the history. Now this will change how you think about AI interactions and thinking about coming artificial. So now let's resume. This is gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna exit out and I'm gonna do get chat with no flags. And you can see resume from one prior turn from history. And we can see the last user prompt. Now watch this. Could you please elaborate? Elaborate. <clears throat> Meaning, I'm going to resume where I left off in this conversation using the gate tracking. It's going to resume that conversation. I can pick up exactly where I left off. So could you please elaborate is going to elaborate on why the sky is blue. Let's dive deeper into that. That is resumed. That is a resumed chat. Isn't that cool? So now the other thing we could do is revert. If we didn't like this, could you elaborate and go back to the original setting? Or we could commit this to head and make it part of the full context. Really remarkable, right? So now if I do that same question here, gate show, you can see that it's resumed the conversation. And if we do the log, we have the two turns here, right? Pretty cool stuff, right? So now let's do some branching. 
let's do some branching that we would do, right? So I'm going to use those copy paste commands and I'm going to make an option one and an option B branch. Okay. And now what I can do from my conversation is check out a branch, resume and ask a question. Now I'm not going to ask this question because it's not going to know, but let's do this one at a time. Copy check out so now i've switched to that branch so i've switched that branch and now i'm going to say gate chat and it's going to resume automatically and i'm going to say see it resumed from two prior history um is the color of the sky affected by the color of the ocean okay now this is in branch option A. Now this is the whole idea behind this. What if I wanted to use a different model? What if I wanted to use a different prompt or explore options but not ruin my context? I have two good questions in there and I don't wanna poison my context with nonsense, all right? So here we've got branch one's answer, all right? Now I'm gonna exit and we're gonna check out option B and we're gonna go, gate chat just to resume and say does the moon or anything else affect the color of the sky okay so we have two different trains of thoughts here in two different branches right and we're going to log and again just to reiterate the point branches aren't just for code these are for ideas and you can explore different explanations, models, or reasoning paths without overwriting anything. You could even use different models per branch. So now I'm gonna go back and check out main, okay? So if we do a quick get status, uh, sorry, gate status, gotta get used to that. You can see the branch I'm on and the options. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out main and get back to main gate checkout main and now we can merge option B with the best explanation because I want to merge that context in so now we've merged it into main and we're going to check those logs again and let's uh, do a gate status we can see we're back on main And there's our gate log where we've merged in that best explanation. Okay. So let's take a look at gate memory branch and nothing is pinned and gate budget. You can see our tokens there and gate context. Okay, no pin memory. So let's pin the last core explanation. So now we've pinned the memory. And when I do context, now you can see that I've pinned in that memory, right? And if I go back to context or budget, you can see the tokens now because I've pinned it, right? And if we do gate memory, we're back into that core explanation being pinned. All right. So gate treats memory as a first class concept. We can explicitly choose what matters. We can see token usage and we can build clean context bundles for agents. Now let's see if we can push this into a remote. So I'm going to specify my token here. Sorry. I'm going to specify my token here. And let's make sure our server's up and running over here. Yes, it is. And now I'm going to push that origin over to that remote site. Okay, so I've added the origin over. And we're going to cat the config here to see the origin location. Okay, so now we're going to push that origin over to that repo push to main to origin. 
Now, this conversation lives on a remote and I can clone it anywhere and continue. You could clone it and continue. These are content address objects being uploaded. So let's go ahead and make a whole new folder here in demo. And I'm going to call this make dir remote example cd into remote example. And we're going to clone that in here. Okay, so now if we split sit into the my AI project clone and do a get gate status, we can see that there it is with the head and the main and everything, right? So now let me resume this chat. Check this out, gate chat. I'm going to resume here and we can see the prior history. Um, please elaborate more on the moon's impact on the sky color please remember i've just cloned this remotely right and then i can push it back from the clone back into the repo and do a, a gate pull and bring it in right so this is just scratching the surface i'm trying to think of everything that i wanted to show you so now check it out Please elaborate. And it picked up exactly where we left off as a remote clone. Okay, now let me just show you some of these artifacts that we have as a result of this gate tracking. So you can see we've got dot gate objects and we have these wonderful objects. Right? Pretty cool, right? We've got the config, we've got the memory and the turns, right? We have all of this great stuff inside of the gate folder. So what's next? What's next is going to be hopefully building a web UI similar to GitHub, where you can have a web user interface to explore the files, clone repos, uh, things like that, just like Git. Right now, the remote is an API-based system. I have a few other things I need to work on with remote, such as forking, pull requests, get pull or gate pull, gate push, things like that. But for now, it's really working very well. The other things on my roadmap are to include things like LM Studio locally, as well as Microsoft Foundry local. And then the big step to see if I can integrate this with something like ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude. Thank you. Pay attention to this. If you are an Olama user, a local LLM user, a Python programmer, someone who understands Git and want to get involved, this is all open source. It's all on the web. And let's try.